Welcome everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a reading today on a karmic contract. So this is going to be a situation with a person that was extremely challenging and difficult and we're just going to see you know, what went down, what this person is experiencing now, as well as anything that you can do to heal and empower yourself moving forward. So just take what resonates of course and get rid of anything that doesn't. All the decks that I'll be using will be listed down below. So let's go ahead and get started and start off with what went wrong with this person. Person. What went down? This is the What Went Wrong cards by Fire Witch Tarot. We have nosy fucks gossiping. So there could have been other people that were very nosy, other people that were trying to involve themselves in this connection, somebody being in someone's ear, drama, just BS. And so this could be something that really heavily influenced this connection. This could be a work situation as well, where somebody was talking about someone, um, spreading gossip, spreading rumors, things that were not even true, just people trying to persuade people to think a certain way, which of course... Um, you know, didn't, didn't bode well for the situation. This could be somebody even um, telling you something about this individual as well. We have uh, talking marriage scares them or you. So this could be that there was someone, and I'm getting a couple of different messages here. Either somebody was already married or committed and it really scared them to think about even leaving that other person, even though they might not have been happy, even though they were telling you that they wanted to leave this person. But when it came down to it, they just couldn't leave that partner. I'm getting that for some. For others, I just feel like maybe you really wanted commitment and this person, even though maybe they had said at, at the beginning that they wanted commitment ended up it was too much for them but this person could have also told you from the get-go that they don't believe in conventional relationships or even marriage and so you went into the relationship anyways or the connection with this person and I'm um, hoping that things would change and I'm getting here it didn't somebody ran away okay so again just take that storyline if it resonates for you let's see what else we have venting way too much about an ex so it could be third party where there was someone that was involved with someone else, obviously, at one point, and somebody was just talking about it too much. You know, it became evidently clear that maybe somebody wasn't over someone or maybe there was just the influence of the ex, somebody that has another partner here. And it was just too much in the situation. So something about talking about another person way too much, it became a triangle, it became a wedge. And we have time for others, but not for, for you or them. So somebody was making someone else a priority or they just were not making this connection a, a priority. And so, of course, you know, actions speak louder than words. So somebody can say to you all day long that they care, but if they're not really showing you that through their actions, then it doesn't mean a damn thing. So that could have been happening as well. All right, what else? Okay, so we have business and work affairs. So I kind of got this over here with this computer. Um, that somebody was at work. This could be a work situation, a work affair, or people at work were starting to talk or spread gossip or rumors, or there was just like a friend situation where friends were starting to um, influence or be nosy in this connection, and it created some sort of issue. Somebody could have also ended up having an affair at work. And we have they can't control themselves. So there could be some sort of a substance abuse, of course, um, some sort of just addiction period, but at the end of the day, someone just couldn't control what they were doing. And it's not an excuse. It just means that they gave into temptation. They gave into the gossip about someone. They were influenced under the influence of someone. Again, not really excuses here. We're just kind of spelling out what may have gone down with this individual. The influence of you know, the stress maybe of leaving another partnership. It was just too much. So they just gave in and they just ended up staying. I'm kind of getting that, that story for some of you guys that someone said they were going to leave a partner, but at the end of the day, they, they just, they didn't do it. They couldn't do it. They said they were going to, and they just, they're not doing it. So this is the karmic contract that we have between you and this person. If it resonates, keep watching. If it doesn't, um, then maybe I will tap into your energy next time. So anyways, you guys, let's go ahead and get some tarot on this. Let's get some tarot on this situation here. We're going to go into my Mystic's Midnight Tarot. What do we need to know about this? Ooh, yeah, tower crumbling down. So to me, this is kind of like the lightning struck the tower. This is what crumbled down this connection because someone didn't do what they said they were going to do or someone just couldn't 
they, they, they couldn't follow through with this commitment. That's just what it is. Whether it was another person involved or whether it was just they couldn't follow through with the commitments that they made to you, you know, no matter what, something came crumbling down because it just couldn't last on its current feet or its current legs. It just could not stand anymore. And so it ultimately came crumbling down. Yep, that was like the destruction, the death and destruction of this whole situation. What else? Okay, so we have the five of bones down and out. Five of bones is the five of pentacles, you guys. And that five of pentacles is a door that is closed. So somebody had to close the door on this connection. Somebody had to shut someone out. Somebody was left out in the cold. Um, it could be you. It could be this person. You could have shut this person out of your life because you had no choice. There's definitely some kind of down and out energy where someone is left out in the cold. You know, um, it's like three is a crowd I'm getting for some of you guys, but um, it could just be that you could, could no longer uh, do this. You could no longer be a part of this situation. Yeah, look at that. Nine of hell is the nine of wands, putting up a fight. You know, you may have really fought hard for this. You may have really fought hard to make this happen, but I'm getting here in the end, it just, it, it wouldn't work. It just was something, it was, it was like a battle that you weren't going to win. Um, no matter how hard you, you fought or no matter how much you wanted this, it just seems like somebody couldn't, they couldn't bring it to the table. They, they, they couldn't follow through with what they said they were going to follow through with. They, they just weren't strong enough to make it happen. That's what I'm seeing here. What else? Seven of hell. Oh yeah. This right here. I'm sorry, seven of hell. I'm sorry. Two of hell. Uh, two of hell is two of wands. We have exploring options. So the two of wands, you guys, is kind of like sitting there trying to contemplate on making a decision. What do I want to do next? I feel like there is, of course, always a choice. We can stay in the situation or we can, you know, take care of ourselves and, and do something different. So I just feel like that's kind of probably where you guys ended up is you just realize that, you know, you have other options. You don't have to be an option also to this person. It's kind of like if you're an option for this person and they're not choosing you, that's saying something. That's the action speak louder than words energy to me. So some of you guys may have just gotten to this point where you were tired of being an option. You were tired of this person basically saying that they cared about you, that they wanted to be with you or that they were going to do something and they just never did. And so that right there is not something that you were interested in any longer. So I feel like a lot of you guys have taken back your power with this person. A lot of you guys are just kind of in a different vibration at this time. It still, of course, bothers you, um, but you're not like literally putting your life on hold for this individual any longer. And I think that that's a very empowering position for you guys to be in, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look and see what is this person going through now that everything is said, done, and over, okay? So these this is a combination of cards from Fire Witch Tarot, three decks that I like to combine together. So let's see what we get. Ooh, ego. Okay, so someone's very much in their ego. You can see there's a standoff. There's a standoff between you and this person. There's ego here. Now, it could be that you're in your ego, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, you guys. Okay, it's not necessarily a bad thing for you to be in your ego because sometimes your ego is really going to save your ass. Sometimes your ego is really going to help you to put up a major boundary that you need to have with this individual, especially somebody who is making empty promises. Okay, so don't ever be afraid of the ego. It says hurt ego, ego getting in the way of relationships, etc. This person could be in their ego as well as in, you know, they don't they don't want to do certain things or they don't feel like they should have to do this or have to do that. And you could be, you know, I'm not going to put up with this crap. So there's like this standoff between you and this individual right now. And I feel like it just has to be that way. It just has to. You've got to take care of yourself and this person's got to figure out what the hell they're doing. What else? We have sick. Yeah, at the end of the day, you guys, somebody just really, really has to get better. They have to get well. I'm also getting too that you run the risk the more that you're involved in this or the more that you don't stand up for yourself and put up healthy boundaries of becoming sick yourself. So what I'm getting here from this particular individual is that, you know, they've got some issues, they've got some ailments, whether it's mental or physical, that they need to really help, uh, I mean, really need to heal. They really need to clear up. And until they can get either their, their mental health under control or whatever's going on, I feel like um, this person's 
decisions or lack thereof decisions um, is only going to bring you down and, and end up making you sick, okay? There could also be a partner or someone connected to this individual that is physically ill or has an ailment. And that, again, is another excuse that this person uses in order to stay stuck in another situation. I'm getting that for some of you guys. Not all, but some. What else is this person going through currently? What else is this person going through? Okay, so we have blocked. So someone is blocked on social media. Maybe you've had to block this person or they've blocked you. There could be someone connected to this person that has made them block you. I'm getting that as well. So there's a blocked energy here. But regardless, what's going on right now is that this connection is um, just blocked. It's blocked from flourishing. It's blocked from being able to move forward in a positive way. And the reason why is because somebody has major issues or there's another person involved. And while that's going on, it's very difficult to grow. Um, but this person I feel feels blocked just themselves. They feel like they can't really do anything right now. They feel stuck. They just feel blocked from their current path. All right, let's get one last message for what this person is feeling currently. Okay, yeah, so it's fake smiles. You know, this person really isn't happy. They're not happy with the decision that they've made. They're not happy if they've um, blocked you or, or left you or you've blocked them and left them. It's like they're pretending. They're pretending they're okay, but I'm getting here they're really not. They're putting on a brave face. They might be in a situation or another relationship uh, where they're just faking happiness, but they're not really happy. Okay, so that's what your person is going through. So let's see in relation to you, what kind of energy are they kind of feeling here when it comes to what went down between the two of you? This is my dark night of the soul tarot. What is this person feeling at this time when it comes to, um, you know, what, what's gone down here? Oh, well, they, they have some uh, sorrow here. The ace of sorrow is the ace of cups. Somebody who is really self-loathing. Um, somebody that's kind of feeling sorry for themselves, somebody who's raking themselves over the coals. So I kind of feel like this person definitely is feeling something on their own now that they're left to their own devices. Now that either you left them or they left you, they're definitely feeling something. They're definitely feeling some sort of anguish here and they're blaming themselves for something. So it's almost like this person knows that they screwed up. They know that they're to blame for what's happened here. They know that um, there's just something that they're in control of, but they can't seem to do what they should do. So this person is loathing themselves, and that's not a great place to be in, okay? So I feel like they're blaming themselves when it comes to what went down between the two of you. Oh yeah, Villain of Torment is the Knight of Swords energy, uh, sharp objects. So sometimes the Knight of Swords can be very um, hurtful with their actions or their words. So I do feel like this person knows that they did hurt you with their actions or their words. And, um, you know, again, they're, they're raking themselves over the coals over this is what I'm seeing with that. So there is some, some shame and guilt here. Yeah. We have the Four of Cups, Jaded. Um, so what this means, of course, what is Four of Cups? Four of Cups is feeling blocked from happiness, feeling we're just kind of accepting mediocrity. We're accepting crap that we don't really want. And I just feel like this person really is just all about accepting a situation that really doesn't make them happy. So if you're worried that they're happy with someone else, I'm getting they're not. And um, they might be rejecting you even though they... Um, you know, don't really feel like they want to reject you, but they are. And why are they rejecting you? Out of their ego. It's coming from a place of ego. That's what I'm seeing with your person. So even though they might be rejecting you or blocking you, it's not necessarily because that that's what makes them happy. I'm getting here. They actually feel a lot of emotion about this situation and what's, what's gone down. Yeah, get a cups. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of sorrow here. You can see this with three of the cards. A lot of sorrow, sorrow and a lot of torment here. Eight of Cups, Stranded Island. So Eight of Cups is all about walking away. So if this person walked away or you walked away from them, they definitely feel abandoned. They feel stranded. They feel stuck in life. They, they can't necessarily um, move forward in a super positive way. 
And I'm just seeing here that with what they're stuck with, which is either themselves or another situation that's not making them happy, it sucks for them. <laughs> so they're like sitting in their shit. That's what I wanna tell you guys. They're sitting in their shit and they're not really happy. They're not really satisfied with that Four of Cups energy, but they screwed themselves with the way that they acted or the, what, what they've said here. So they have no one to blame but themselves. That's what I'm seeing when it comes to your person, when they think about you and this situation. So it's kind of like it sucks to be them, um, but if your person really wants to make some changes, they are gonna have to do the work. They're gonna have to find the strength within themselves to change their circumstances and to start doing the right thing for themselves and for other people. So that is where your person is at and that's where the connection seems to be stuck. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift gears and we're going to see you know, what you can kind of take from all of this, what you're learning about yourself, how you can empower yourself from what you have experienced with this person. We're gonna go ahead and go into the Spiritual Gifts Oracle. What can you do to empower yourself or what can you focus on at this time? Oh, okay, so we have clairsentience. So this is saying here that you have the ability to feel deeply into situations, places, or people, sensing something beyond the physical realm. So to me, this is like an empathic energy, okay? So you sense and you feel that this person is really, really going through something. So this to me is just confirming for you that your feelings about this situation, your feelings about what this person is going through are absolutely accurate. So don't ever um, doubt that. Don't ever doubt your accuracy when it comes to what's going on with the situation of this person, okay? Let's go ahead and go into my Connections of the Modern World Tarot here that I created with my daughter. Oh, the sun, yeah. The sun is illumination. The sun is all about um, understanding something and seeing things very, very clearly, okay? So this is also about um, happiness, positivity, and abundance. What I feel is that you will grow because I do see the sun is about growth and development because it takes the sun for things to grow like plants and things like that. So you are growing from this situation. Um, you're growing your, your skills. You're growing your empathic abilities, your psychic abilities, your psychic gifts from the situation. Um, you know, you have, may have felt a lot of anguish yourself, a lot of torment, a lot of sorrow from this person or situation, but you realize that you can trust your intuition. So that's what you've learned from the situation is that you can trust your intuition, that you are actually very, very psychic and you're sensitive and you know, you feel things very deeply and there's a reason because you're meant to understand something about pain. You're meant to understand something about people. You're meant to understand something about um, wounds even and soul connections. That's what I'm seeing. What else? Okay, so we have sophisticated. So it says you have a higher understanding of sex and sexuality. It's authentic and empowering often having a shocking effect on people and provoking insecurity in others. So this is about having um, a lot of confidence. You know, this is very much a, um, like a divine feminine in her uh, strong, um, you know, uh, very positive, authoritative, situ like, a, like a position. That's what I'm trying to say. Like she's sitting in her throne. So this could be very intimidating for people that have a lot of shadows still, that they have unresolved shadows and traumas. You can really, really rub some people the wrong way. You can really intimidate other people that are not comfortable with their shadows. And that could be something that even scared this person. Maybe you were very much ready to meet them in their, in their shadow. You were very much ready to accept them for who they were and because they can't accept themselves or because they have a difficult time with whatever they're battling, um, that just is something that really, really causes this person to feel um, threatened, threatened by your strength that you know who you are and you know what you want in this life and that you're unapologetically yourself. That's what I'm getting here. Very strong feminine vibes here. And this, let's just say this is a masculine or someone, you know, just whatever, someone else in the situation, they don't feel quite as strong as you do. So what you can take from this as well is you're becoming a strong feminine. You're becoming a stronger version of yourself from this person and situation. You have grown just major amounts here. Oh yeah, look at this. Queen of Swords, badass energy. You want to talk about being a strong feminine? That's the Queen of Swords right here. Queen of Swords doesn't take shit. Okay, so it says here, um, this is someone who is mind over matter. She sets very healthy boundaries. Okay, so you may have had to set boundaries with this individual. They may not like that. They may try to turn it around on you. Um, they may try to make excuses for their own behavior because they don't feel strong. 
They know that you're strong and that intimidates the hell out of them. So you are a queen all the way, whoever whoever's watching this video. And there could be other people around this person that are very threatened by you as well. So they try to either say things about you or they try to dirty you up to this person. And because this person might be weak or under the influence, they're going to fall for it. So there is some kind of amount of... Um, you being um, very sovereign, you being a person that is in your integrity, and that, sh that threatens people. A strong person threatens people. You irritate someone else's demons is what I'm getting here, okay? So what you can learn from all of this is that you can at least walk away with your head held high, that you weren't going to put up with this crap anymore, that you weren't going to allow other people to take you down, that you're going to take back your power and you're going to move forward with your head held high and that you deserve more than this situation. So to me, what you've learned from this is that you deserve better. And so this person's either going to level up with you or they're going to simply fade away. And But you're going places is what I'm seeing here. That's what you can take from all of this. All right, let's get the last message. We have sultry. <laughs> you want to talk about being a sophisticated, sultry, divine feminine? It says your serene presence makes you otherworldly with the ability to feel your physical sensations as they are very as they are very heightened, trapping those around you in your rapture. So to me, this is like a seduction. This is um, dark feminine vibes, not negative, but dark feminine is holding healthy boundaries. Also being very comfortable in your sexuality, um, being very confident in, in your um, feminine energy. Okay. So again, that can threaten people that have issues with that. And I just feel like maybe somebody has issues in that department. Okay. And we have the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups says disillusioned fantasy and daydreaming. So for me, this right here just kind of shows that, you know, maybe we did get caught up in some sort of dream. Maybe we got caught up in a fantasy. Maybe we really believed for a moment that this person either was the one or that they would choose us or that, you know, everything would be okay if we just kind of kept riding the wave of having faith in a, in a partnership or, you know, feeling good about it or, you know, raising our vibration. But the thing is, you guys, at the end of the day, Everybody has free will and, you know, you can't necessarily will someone to love you. You can't make something happen. Um, you know, a person, I don't know why my cats are doing this. <laughs> um, a person is either going to level up with you and be on your same vibration and wavelength. Two people are going to have that same vibration at the same time or they're not. They're going to constantly be a mismatch. It's constantly going to be bad timing. So I just kind of feel like what might have happened with this in Really, <laughs> what might have happened with this person is that um, it was it was a feeling that was so magical at one time, and it might still feel very magical for you. You might even kind of tap into this magical vibe of this connection, but at the end of the day, if it's not matching up in reality, you know you do have to set a healthy boundary for yourself and say, you know what, as magical as it is, and as amazing or you know, something otherworldly, there's something otherworldly about this connection. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, the, the reality is that we can't make it work. The reality is that you're not choosing me. The reality is that you're not leveling up with me. So at some point we have to take care of ourselves. At some point we have to level up with ourselves so we can carry on and move forward and be stronger versions of ourselves. So I feel like this is a, a, a good lesson for some of you guys dealing with someone where there could have been a lot of magic and a lot of potential initially, but you're seeing the proof in the pudding that this person doesn't have what it takes at this time. It doesn't mean forever, but at this time to basically level up with you and, and give it a go and, and to make this connection work. They're too busy either in another situation or they're just too busy making excuses. And I'm getting here as the strong divine feminine. You're not putting up with this crap anymore. That's it. So you can walk away with your head held high. And if this person wants to chase after you, great, let them. But uh, you're going places. You're moving forward. You're heading towards the sun. You're heading towards the light, baby. You are headed towards happier times. That's where you're headed. So you can take the lessons with this, you know, from the situation with you, but you're headed towards the sun. You're headed towards the ha happier times in your life.
and I love this for you guys. So anyways, I hope that that resonated with somebody out there, whoever needed to hear it. I hope you guys um, enjoy those messages and thanks for watching. And I would love it if you guys wanted to give this a thumbs up or even leave a little heart in the comments because it definitely helps my channel to continue to grow. So thanks again, you guys. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.